Hello everybody, it's Wyvern here with another series of Total War Warhammer 2 uh, Quick Match Games. Uh, this is going to be a few games in one, uh, a few games together. Uh, I simply felt like it. I um, have had <laughs> quite a bit more time now that midterms are, are basically over and I don't have as much school stuff to do. I've had more time to play, so I've really just been messing around and trying different builds and getting back into Warhammer 2 Quick Play. And this match, actually pretty short, and mostly I just wanted to show... Uh, what to do if your opponent goes with a very skirmish or a very uh, flank heavy build like uh, what you, what you got to do to try to shut that down so in this situation I was playing as Empire and I'll, I'll go over the composition very very quickly I did bring Boris Toddbringer with of course the usual uh, equipment of uh, Crush the Weak um, White Cloak of Ulrich and uh, the Midland Rune Fang. Alongside him, I did bring a Light Wizard. I actually think he's really solid with the uh, Foss Protection being a cheap little defensive spell. Exorcism being really useful against Undead, actually, if you want to collapse their units a little quicker. And then Shem's Burning Gaze and Net of Mintok. Uh, Shem's Burning Gaze, in case I wanted to sh kind of I wanted to try it out if my Lord decided, uh, my opponent decided to bring like uh, more some bigger region heavy units. Then I do have a Power Stone, of course, to augment my Winds and Magic. Uh, for my sort of main line, if you could call it that, two two flatulence backed up by a single Empire Captain, and then two Greatswords, and these guys are really just there to shut down to me. Uh, Graveguard, deal with enemy Chaff, the flatulence will deal with Chaff really effectively, while the Greatswords will deal with anything more heavily armored, um, except for maybe Graveguard with Grey Weapons and Cairn Wraiths, but you don't usually see Cairn Wraiths, especially against Empire, and for that matter, even Graveguards with Grey Weapons aren't that popular just because of Empire shooting. Behind them, I do have a single unit of Outriders with grenade launchers ready to shut down my opponent's infantry. And over here, the cavalry pack does include two units of Demigriff Knights with halberds. And up in the front, three units of Outriders. And Outriders are, are of course, rather potent. They Here, I'm actually being really aggressive and greedy and trying to get some shots into Thelbats because I want to take my opponent's skirmishers offline if as quickly as I can. You can see, or my opponent's fast units offline. You can see he's got Thelbats, he's got the Dire Pack, Blood Knights, more bats, a Necromancer. And back here, he's got another unit of direwolves, so he's got me completely surrounded, and I really need to act fast, in my opinion, that was what I thought, uh, to try to knock out at least some of these kiting, annoying units, and get them off the field as quickly as I can. Now, one of the big problems with these sorts of builds, though, is that they are very micro-intensive, and if you slip up on micro, you can lose units pretty quickly. For my opponents, the rest of my opponent's build, though, he does have some zombies in the front, some chaff, back, backed up by graveguard spearmen, and then two units of cryptars to bust through units like the uh, greatswords. So definitely a decent all-around comp, uh, but uh, we will definitely see how things kind of will pan out. Over here, you can see the bats just kind of hovering outside of range. Obviously, I don't have much in the way of shooting. I've got these outriders with grenade launchers, but uh, they can't shoot up. Over here, I'm, I'm definitely getting a little muddled up. You can see my uh, outriders are getting... Uh, pursued, and I actually managed to get a nice little charge here into the direwolves, because my opponent had him um, chasing after my outriders, and you can see that they're going to collapse very, very quickly, and in the meantime, my opponent is trying to shift around with the direwolves and the bats, but this, you can see how much micro is being uh, done here, and he's just not able to micro through all of this. Uh, in the meantime, I do try to push my outriders grenade launchers forward a little bit, perhaps trying try to sally forth a little bit. It's definitely a bunch of skirmish play right now. Uh, my opponent is being kind of slow and pushing and pushing his blood knights forward. He obviously doesn't want to commit him against the demi two units of demigroup knights with halberds, because that'll be a massacre. Uh, even if he did have, say, uh, support from um, from uh, Manfred Zombie Summons. Now over here, you can see I'm plucking away at the fell bats with my outrider fire. It might seem like an inefficient usage of uh, ammo. It kind of is, but I do need to get these units offline, and I already see that my opponent doesn't have much else that's too threatening, so definitely a decent priority there. Over here, the enemy have nice trounce the dire wolves, while the dire pack here does get caught up by Boris and the light wizard, while I do net down the blood knights, preventing them from helping. This is really kind of critical. I, this is why I really like the new net of a Mintok. It's just a very cheap spell to deny, to tactically shut down some of your opponent's uh, attacks or options. My opponent does summon some zombies here, um, or actually sneak some zombies here because I didn't bother shutting them down. Over here you can see the Sternsmen though getting shredded by grenade launcher fire as they clump up around the Empire Captain. You can see with all this micro that my opponent is being forced to do, he's definitely having a rough time. Over here the Dire Pack is struggling, you can see an invocation of Nehek going down as does the Foss Protection which will allow my Demigriffs to trade really effectively with these Blood Knights who are of course being debuffed by Boris and you can see their melee attack is absolutely in the gutter. They've got about 40 melee attack right now which against the 31 me uh, melee defense of the, blood of the Demigriffs is not going to be great, especially with Foss Protection in there, 61. These guys are basically almost never hitting. My outriders here are forced to flee because my opponent does pull through with Manfred and the Strinsman. You can see my outriders over here just trying to skir skirmish around, get some shots into the back of these Cryptars, into the uh, Skeleton Spears and the Graveguard. You can see the Greatswords and Fledgelands are holding pretty well. Uh, 
about as well as one could expect given how much overwhelming strength my opponent has. Really though, this was a big mistake on my opponent's part, allowing all of his infantry to get caught up on these clumps. You could easily flank, try to collapse the greatswords, and then leave the flagellants for mopping up later. Flagellants aren't particularly dangerous to units, like Graveguard for example. Over here, Boris does intercept does manage to intercept Manfred with the help of some demigriffs, and you can see I simply, uh, these zombies, I simply ignore them, uh, they're not really a threat to demigriffs, I need to shut down Manfred and that's really the key here. Stern's men still pursuing, being a nuisance, in the meantime my outriders are constantly having to flee from these annoying zombies, um, so definitely a good usage of these zombies, uh, you, it does force you to reposition and whatnot, so it's definitely not entirely useless. You can see the Empire Captain is in the thick of things here, providing that support to these troops, to the Graveguard, or not the Graveguard, to the Flagellants and to the Greatswords, who are hacking and slashing their way through my opponent's troops. My opponent finally does get a pincer with those zombies, but of course, veteran up Greatswords, who are kind of thrashing everything here, even the, with the Cryptars support, are going to do okay. And my, at this point, I'm simply trying to focus out the, uh, the uh, Cryptars and get them off the field. My opponents completely forgot about these Felbats, and I'm not really bothering chasing after them right now. I'm figuring I really need to prioritize my opponent's heavy troops, and that is kind of where the game ends, with Manfred getting beaten down in the pits over there. So a very quick game, and this wasn't so much to um, brag about anything. This wasn't so much for an intense game, I don't think, but it's just to simply demonstrate what you need to do if you're fighting an opponent who has a very scrimmage-heavy build, in my opinion. You need to try and knock out all those fast units, fast movers as quickly as you can, uh, commit your resources to them, and if you manage to get rid of them, get that mobility edge, then you'll be in a very strong spot. In this situation with my cavalry units, I had a lot of skirmish calf, which is actually not great if you have to deal with so many direwolves and fellbats and whatnot, so you really need to try to shut those units down as quickly as, po quickly as possible, get them off the board, and open up room for your outriders and for your uh, outriders can lay launchers and all that to uh, really, really shine. Um, and and from that, in th that respect, for my opponent, definitely, I think uh, there was a few micro slip ups, which allowed me to kind of get the jump on his squishy troops. Had my opponent been a little bit more on top of his micro, he might have been able to pincer me a little more effectively. Uh, obviously, demigriffs, while not have, not being the greatest of shock calves uh, or not having the best of charge bonus, would do a lot better when they uh, get a charge offs. Um, so, had he been able to kind of prevent my at least shut down some of my demigriffs charges, that would have been very very useful for uh, Frosted Dude over here. Um, so, definitely. Uh, very quick game, and um, not necessarily, not necessarily that, that much of a, uh, I think, fancy game to show off, but I did want to just show off how you got to move quickly, try to shut down as much as you can. If you, don't, if you need to use some ammunition, for example, on your Outriders, see what units you have to prioritize. If you can get the units like Bats off the field, even if it costs you some volleys on the Outriders, that's fine. Get them, get them off the field. You can always kite away from zombies. You don't have to waste ammo on those. Uh, just kill the, kill the Bats, get, on, get behind your opponent's lines, and then you, then you can do whatever you want. Um, so yeah, I do hope you, uh, if, from my opponent's perspective, I think the biggest problems here were uh, from micro, from the micro standpoint, uh, he just got, <laughs> he just got shut down. Uh, definitely I think there's also a little bit of a lack of armor, pier of armor piercing, he doesn't have much to deal with my uh, demigriff mob here, um, doesn't have much to deal with great swords either for that matter, obviously uh, cryptars are decent, but if your opponent does decide to bring out riders and units like that, you're going to be in a bit of a pickle. So, without further ado, we're going to hop on over to another match and... Uh, See how things go there. So here we are on the Plains of the Dead. Once again, playing as Empire, this time around against the Beastmen. And this is going to be quite a bit of a, I think, more, more fun match than the uh, last one. Because we're going very, very cav heavy. Um, for my lord, I did decide to bring Boris Toadbringer because, of course, he's just solid. I did bring him on a Griffin this time. I've been. Due to the prevalence of Flying Lords and the fact that a lot of factions have a much better Air Force than Empire, I've actually kind of been shying away from using Flying Lords as Empire. Definitely the Griffin Mount, I think, is kind of limited in usage nowadays, same with Pegasus, unless you're going with, say, uh, Balthazar Gelton just trying to cut your opponent uh, to oblivion. But nonetheless, against Beastmen, who obviously don't have uh, much in the way of air power, uh, you're very, very solid. He does, have, of course, still have the White Cloak of Ulrich, he's got the Midland Rune Fang, and the Crush the Weak, and of course he does have Fear and Terror due to being on Griffin, which is really powerful against the Beastmen, who tend to have issues against those sorts, those sorts of mechanics. He's also fairly tanky, uh, but doesn't have the best of melee stats, so definitely solid all-around Lord here, and uh, as usual, it's Boris. What, 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 can, what else can you say? Over on the flank, we do have a Light Wizard with Net of Mintok and Foss Protection, backing up a unit of Reichsguard and Empire Knights, as well as an Empire Captain. So this is really what one of my big striking forces is. On the other end, we do have two units of Reichsguard. Um, the, the reason I'm bringing so much Reichsguard, so much heavy cap, is because they're actually pretty solid against the Beastmen. Uh, beast, they'll crush through Beastmen Chaff Infantry really, really effectively. They'll smash into Minotaurs and units like that, and they'll actually trade pretty well as long as they get the charge off, just because they've got so because they've got good, decent weapon strength, and 
they can surround the Minotaurs, and Minotaurs don't have much survivability. The only thing they're not great against is Bestigors, but for that we do have this front line of three Outriders. So the Outriders, of course, do have armor piercing, they do have a decent range, and they can definitely tear through, say, Bestigors or Gorbals, which is really the only big threats to this sort of army. Uh, in the front, we do have a bunch of unbreakable units, two Flagellants and a Sigmar Sons, as well as a single unit of Swordsmen uh, in reserve, because that was all I had money for. In the in the meantime, you can see the skirmishing is kicking off. My opponent did decide to go with a Minotaur heavy build, which is a little interesting against Empire, which tends to have a lot of shooting. But you can see we are immediately engaging in these Centigors with throwing axes. And you definitely want to be careful, because Centigors, if they get into melee, they will absolutely thrash Outriders. Empire uh, skirmishers are some of the worst in the game with melee stats, and I think, I think the only stuff that's worse is actually Goblin Wolf Riders, and I think everything else might actually be better. Um, so you can see, though, these volleys going into the Centigors with throwing axes, doing great damage. In the meantime, my opponent is pushing forward. He does a Morgur. Front line of Ungors. These guys are very cheap chaff infantry, and they'll collapse pretty badly against most of my unbreakable front line here. Uh, but they are backed by a bunch of Minotaurs, <laughs> three units of them to be exact, and then a single unit of Minotaurs with Great Weapons. So definitely some pretty potent punching force there, um, and definitely could be a bit of, bit of a problem for me. But obviously the Rice Guard and Empire Knights, uh, to keep going off the original point, you can see a net going down there on the Centigors, allowing them to kind of be whittled down and shot to death by all those volleys of handgun fire. Uh, but one of the big uses of... Um, Reichsguard and Empire Knights is that they do trample through even Centigors with great weapons. As long as they get their charge off, they just have a decent enough charge bonus, good enough weapon strength, all that sort of stuff. Uh, you can see those poor Centigors really not having a good time of it. They're just getting shot to death. And uh, I'm why I'm forced to pull back with Outriders. That was a pretty good alpha strike. My opponent got nothing out of that and already lost um, most of his Centigors there over health. In the meantime, the front line here is starting to kind of devolve. You can see the um, Sigmar Suns, the Flagellants, all those units are trading pretty well with the Ongors, but obviously the Minotaurs are going to make a difference. I made a big mistake here, and I didn't notice. My opponent had tucked away in the corner, and it gets shielded out by the uh, edge of the minimap. Um, he actually had a unit of Poison Warhounds and Centigors, and while these units aren't great against Reichsguard or against the units like that, they did manage to get the jump on me here. They are sandwiching my Reichsguard against these spears where I wanted to pull out, and they are going to sandwich my other unit of Reichsguard over there. So you can see things are definitely looking a little grim. My opponent does pat uh, pop Call of Violence just to keep his troops um, morale up, which I'm not entirely sure is necessary, but still pretty potent. Over here you can see the Minotaurs though getting piled into by the cavalry. Um, over here, Ungor Herd gets terror routed. This is what I'm trying to use Boris for, just for those terror routes. Quickly routing, routing off the infantry support, then pulling Boris through to go help on the other flank. If I can buckle these um, Ungor Spears, I can oh, free up these Reichs cards, and that would be a huge boon for me. Because right now my Reichs cards are both in a bad spot. You can see false protection has gone down to keep these units in the fight, kill, help them hold out a little better. But I really need to get rid of those supporting troops. Anytime my Outriders are trying their best to shoot that, shut down these Centigors, but you can see they're clumping on top of each other, which is a big problem. But at the same time, my opponent does have a, um, a little bit of a micro slip up. And he's, obviously, his uh, skirmish mode is not particularly great. But uh, he's actually going to let his Centigors get caught up here by the Heavy Cap. And over here, you can see the Chaos Spawn has been summoned. I do believe both units of it will be coming up shortly. Um, so obviously I'm going to lose all these swordsmen, but that's okay, I don't really care. We're basically disentangling ourselves and leaving these low infantry units to their fates because, simply put, there's no way to keep them alive. But these Centigors are getting zoned off by uh, Boris and the Reichsguard, and uh, although the Minotaurs are trying to pursue, Boris will be able to disentangle himself and escape. In the meantime, out on the flanks, we are trying to secure kind of uh, our back line. The Empire Captain is running down these Minotaurs, the Empire Knights are chasing down these Centigors with throwing axes, and you can see they're going to break. And this is really a bit of a slip-up for my opponent. Um, Skirmish mode isn't great, but uh, most likely he yeah, didn't have him on skirmish mode here, so I do believe they're actually going to get caught here. Maybe the Empire Knights just get their charge off, and um, they do manage to kind of uh, start catching up a little bit, and they'll eventually catch those guys. So in the meantime, the Outriders are trying to skirmish up to, uh, and catch up to these Centigors throwing axes. You can see Flagellants chasing off these Angor Spears. Um, one of the interesting things is that the uh, Minotaurs can actually almost catch Heavy Cav, especially on the charge, because they do have this fancy little mechanic called Blood Greed, which bumps them up to 63 speed when they're within 70 meters of you, so definitely something to watch out for. Over here, the Minotaurs with Great Weapons do d disengage, and I'm going to simply try to push off my opponent's remaining troops. I want to get rid of his uh, supporting forces, like these Centigors. I want to get rid of as many of these Ungors and the um, Centigors throwing axes as I possibly can. You can see over here, they've got caught by Reichsguard and Empire Knights, so these guys are not going to be long for this world. Um, and you can see they're just getting massacred here in the pits. So definitely things are looking pretty grim for the Beastmen. And you can see the balance of power, though, is still pretty even. Though as these Minotaurs, as the Centigors and all those units get shoved off the field, things will start looking up, in my opinion. Now, you can see I'm being a little greedy here with Outriders, trying to get some pot shots. The Minotaurs are obviously unshielded. They're, this is the cheapest variant. I'm just waiting for the Chaos Spawn to kind of wilt away. Um, because I obviously don't want to engage as long as my opponent has that advantage. It's one of the things keeping his, the... Uh, balance of power so so much in his favor right now uh, or so 
even right now is is those chaos spawns. So if I can wait wait those out and wait for them to collapse, I'll be in a much better spot. Over here, I'm trying to get rid of the hounds, but this is a big problem for me. My army is split in half, and I'm not really able to actually pull my army together. Over here, I'm definitely blobbing my outriders, and that's a big micro mistake. I should be splitting them to kind of deal with my opponent that way. Over here, the Ungors do uh, get kind of massacred. They do try to push push past the flagellants, but unfortunately, I'm going to forget about my flagellants here, and uh, it's going to be a bit of a problem. So you can see I'm trying to regroup my cab. Obviously, I don't have any healing spells or anything like that. Uh, but they still are somewhat healthy and capable of fighting. Uh, two units of Reichsguard, obviously, on 30 models or 31 models apiece. And over here, I do try to knock out Morgur with a net of a Mintok and some fire from the Outriders, but it really doesn't work out. Empire Captain's still healthy. Um, Mage, fairly healthy. Uh, the only problem, really, is is that the heavy cab, that my main strike force at this point is crippled. So... You can see I do get a little charge here into Morgur, knock him down a bit. Obviously, he does have regen, so I'm not really hoping to do very much there. Um, but we basically push through Morgur, and it will immediately go after the uh, Minotaurs thereafter. You can see the Minotaurs there are obviously very healthy, but with the help of the captain, with the help, with all this heavy cap surrounding him, the Minotaurs should get beaten down. Unfortunately, though, on the flank here, the Hounds do catch up to my Reichsguard. I don't get a charge off here, um, and so the Reichsguard actually going to get pulled into the muck by the Hounds, which allows these Minotaurs with great to catch up, and they are going to take these Reichsguard to Pound Town. You can see they're already down 10 models in the space of just a few seconds, and that's just an absolute disaster for me. Um, I do manage to get a tear out on these Ungor Spears with Boris and get him off the field, but that's really not a win when you consider I lost about... Um, I've already lost about 20 models of Reichsguard here, and I'm going to lose another t probably about 20 here before they break. It's definitely a big problem. I'm not able to escape because of those Chaos Warhounds, and things are definitely looking grim. On the flip side, though, we did manage to knock out these Minotaurs, and we'll manage to take out another unit of them uh, before my opponent is really able to... Uh, you can see they do get a charge here because I wasn't really paying attention, but they will still get surrounded. Uh, the Empire Captain will be in there, and we'll be able to really deal with those Minotaurs pretty, pretty effectively. Um, so definitely my opponent split up a little bit, but it's definitely coming out worse for me because these Reichs are in really bad shape right now. On the flip side, though, the Outriders are picking away at the Minotaurs with Grey Weapons. You can see I do disengage from these Minotaurs um, and simply leave them behind. I don't really want to fight them right now. Um, and uh, so definitely, slowly but surely, we're picking our opponent's army apart with our higher superior mobility. I do dive Boris in here into the Angor herd, um, and then get a nice little recharge in with the uh, Reichsguard, which just causes them to tear out. Uh, unfortunately, they once again won't be able to disentangle themselves before the Minotaur's with great weapons do get into charge range. And uh, what's the charge? I guess it only gives them 60 speed, but still, it makes them very mobile. And uh, they're going to catch up to the Reichsguard here and cause them to break. Nonetheless, things are looking okay. I'm going to be trying to pick off these Chaos Warhounds. I want to get rid of them because that poison is really a nuisance. You can see the balance of power is decisively shifting in my favor, mostly because of these Outriders who still have a very hefty amount of ammo. So if I can pick apart these Minotaurs, um, then I'll basically be in a really good spot. And I finally remembered my Flashlands, so they're finally marching their way back across the map on 115 kills. Uh, so there's going to be a little bit of kind of Benny Hill action here. Um, as I do manage to route another unit of the Ungor herd, we do get a net on these Minotaurs with great weapons, preventing them from getting any sort of charge. It's important to keep in mind that the Minotaurs actually have a pretty good charge bonus. Um, so with no charge, uh, we do uh, we are able to kind of get in there with our heroes, with our with our lord and all, and uh, our remaining heavy cav, and kind of lay the smack down on these guys. You can see they're taking a huge beating uh, on the charge as those nice plow in. Not the greatest of charges. But they're only down two models in a pretty bad spot. Over here, the Outriders are being pursued, and I'm just not not using them pr properly. I do still have some magic, so I get a false protection here, uh, which, I mean, I'm really hoping to get these Minotaurs with Grey Weapons off the field quickly, and that would then open up the uh, opportunity to deal with these annoying Minotaurs. So, these Flagellants are still pretty far away, um, but obviously with the Outriders and two and three healthy heroes, I'm definitely feeling that I can I can do this. Unfortunately, my heavy cav here does start to rout. You can see the Reichsguard falling apart. Um, it's really just Boris and the Captain, but he does manage to tear out those Angors, which is going to leave just the Minotaurs and Morgur. Um, obviously, these Angors are coming back, but at this point, with fear and terror, these guys are there's no way in heck these guys are ever going to stick around. Uh, they're just going to collapse, and you can see uh, here they get charged, and they're immediately going to fall apart and uh, rout and shatter actually so we'll be able to push off these minotaurs with great weapons who are a big priority they still have a thousand hp which could be absolutely crucial obviously with morgur not being dead then my opponent still has a lot of leadership but in the meantime my two of my outriders are cheering off on morgur my one other unit of outriders is picking at these minotaurs i can obviously cycle charge with boris you can see another one does go down um, and they're very low on morale so with my heroes charging in uh getting some hefty damage in there you can see the minotaurs are going to break and uh, that is going to be game as my opponent suffers army losses so a very lengthy game Definitely lots of skirmishing, and I think it definitely shows how powerful a heavy cav can be against the uh, beastmen. You obviously need some form of armor piercing, so in this case I brought Boris on the griffin and the two outriders, uh, just in case my opponent brought bestigors or gorbals. 
but otherwise, the uh, mob of Reichsguard, backed by some flagellants and the state is sort of lower end troops, can easily handle just about anything the beastmen can throw at you. If your opponent decides to go with a mob of great weapons, for example, um, you can always counteract that to an extent with by using false protection to keep your Reichsguard's melee defense much higher. Um, you'll basically reduce a Centigor's great weapons melee attack to the bare minimum of like 10% or something, so they, they really don't stand a chance. And Beastmen don't have equivalent, really have too many equivalent skills. Um, and even Empire Knights can trade pretty well. They don't have the greatest weapon strength, I think it's only 30, but um, they are pretty cheap. <laughs> they have a lot of armor, so against normal Centigors, against Angor herds, and those sorts of units, they do really well. And uh, they're still a heavy cap. They're, they're definitely decent. So watch out. Empire can, heavy cap can do great against Beastmen, in my opinion. And you obviously don't need to bring demigriffs or, demi or royal of griffites or anything like that. So I do hope you guys enjoy the video. Uh, it's I do hope you found it interesting and hopefully entertaining. If you did, be sure to leave a, leave a like and subscribe down below. If you have any comments, criticism, any questions, anything like that, be sure to share those and I'll respond as soon as I can. As usual, guys, I do appreciate you all for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye for now.